Hi folks, Roger Bain from Bain Custom Woodworking here in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville. Today I'm working on installing some cabinet doors, so I want to introduce you to the soft close hinges that I use and the tools that I use to install those hinges and some of the tools that I just bought recently to make that job easier for me. So stay tuned and let's see if we can get this done for you. Okay, so I'm gonna focus on my tools today. So you won't see my face, but you'll see my hands. So one of the things that I do, first thing, these are soft close frame hinges for uh, from Berta. I buy them on Amazon. The company is Berta, B-E-R-T-A. And I use both the frame and the frameless hinges from this company, and I have yet to have a problem with these. They install very easily and these are very nice. They adjust. They have three different screws to adjust the door uh, back and forth, up and down, and then your tilt and they work uh, very, very nicely. So I'm putting, because these doors have an inset of glass, I'm putting three of these on because these doors are about 41 inches long. So those are the hinges that I'm using. The way that I install them is using the Craig jig and I'm using this tool here. I have it set to three and that leaves me in just about a little less than about five eighths, maybe a little bit more in uh, to the center. And that allows me to install these hinges without, truly without thinking once I have them all set up. One of the things that I purchased just recently and I should have purchased this a long time ago are these self-centering drill bits from Rockler. Now this is the set of, of three, I think it's four, six, and eight, or six, eight, and 10. Not sure which one is at this point, but these things are fabulous for centering up the screws into the hole on both the hinge and the door side. Of course, I'm using my rigid tools to do this with uh, I have my clamps from Bessie to uh, clamp down the frames as I, if I, as I drill them in. So let's lay this out and let's see how it works. So I will be right back. Okay, so we want the hinges three and a half inches from the ends. So I'm using my uh, Paolini tool and I'm sure I pronounced that incorrectly from Woodpeckers. I have it set at three and a half so I can mark my ends on each end of where my hinges are. So I know where these are and then what we're also going to do is because these are holding glass and there's a there's a good weight to them I'm actually putting another one dead center at 20 and a half inches so that I have some good support on these doors with the windows one of the other things I'm going to do because this guy, as you start to drill into the wood, this is pretty hard. This is red oak, so it's pretty hard. So I'm gonna take that off, and I'm gonna actually clamp this down just so I don't have to worry about it moving on me. Uh, these Bessie uh, clamps are fabulous. They're easy to work with. They clamp down pretty quick. So on this instance, on, these, on this Craig jig, I can set how much my hinge is inset here. I have it set at three. There's a mark on here to set up your center. And what you want is that center is right on that, that auger bit, that drill bit right there. Square that up, drill them in. Let's go ahead and get the other two drilled. What I'm doing here is I want to make sure that my mark is all the way out to the edge of the door so I can see it when I go to line this guy up. And what this tool is doing is actually lining up the center of the hinge to this point right here in the center of the bit so that 
when you line it up, the center of the hinge will fit perfectly in this hole. So here we have it. We've got our hinges. We're going to set them in. Now this tool from Craig allows you to actually drill the holes for the hinges here, but I'm not going to use that because that is the reason that I purchased the centering drill bit for it. But one thing that I've learned from someone, and honestly, I'm not sure who I learned it from. Take your level. Let's put those babies right up tight. So what I'm doing here with this is I'm pushing this against the hinges so that it keeps the hinges square to each other and square to their holes. Now I'll drill these in. you with this centering bit there's no thinking I can just run right through all of these and I don't have to worry about it I know they're completely centered up on, on the, uh, the door again use the level put your pressure against it as you're putting the screws in and I'm a huge fan of putting one in in each one Getting, that, getting each one of them squared up where they belong. And now let's go back through and get the other ones put in. So there we have our hinges are in the door and they're ready to go. So let's install this. So let's look at something here before I get, bring the door over. I know I need to have my doors at a half inch overlay. I'm working by myself, which means I only have two hands. So what I've done is I've clamped a board here that is a half inch from here. So now I can set my door in there. I know that clamp might get in the way, but because the door has to be open in order for me to install, that clamp should be fine. And it's got this held on pretty sturdy, so I don't have to worry about it. So let's put the door on here. And what I'll do is I'm going to try and stay out of the way of the camera as best as I possibly can. But what I'm going to do is probably show you me install one of the hinges up here, and then I'll do the other two off camera, and then we'll look at the door. This guy right here. There's the first hinge. Okay, so there's the door. The door's in. Let's set the tools aside. Let's take off our our help our cleat here. And let's back up. Here we go. We're backing up. One of the problems that we have is this is a very large cabinet. So let's see if we can get it. There's our door. All right, it's staying up by itself. At least it hasn't fallen down yet. Now, understand these are soft closed hinges, but because my cabinet is on my mobile cart that is at a 10 degree angle, the doors are going to shut a little faster than they should be. But look at that. Doors are shut, so let's take a walk. You ready? Here we go. We're going to walk right up to the cabinet. Those doors are spot on. Let's roll back here. We've got three of the four doors on. Let's go get number four, and then we'll take a look at the cabinet. Okay, folks, so there you have it. We have four doors on our cabinet that are half-inch overlay all the way around they are made of red oak and they will have a tempered glass inlay 
when we're all done, I have to order the glass. So let's talk about a couple things. One of the things that I did when I installed these is I used that scab piece down here on the bottom to maintain my half inch. Piece of cake makes it easier to install. It's my third hand. And if you notice, I've used Bessie clamps for everything that I've clamped together. Um, I do have Bessie clamps on the cabinet itself. Reason for that is my wood rack, my mobile cart is at a 10 degree angle so I can build and work on it. And I wanna make sure this stays put overnight. It's been on here for a week and a half, hasn't moved at all. So let's talk about a couple of the things that I used. These are Berta, B-E-R-T-A, soft close hinges. I buy them on Amazon. These are for the face frame ones. I've also bought the um, a fr frameless so that, and so that I have uh, inset drawers. I bought them for that and it works great. Um, they're soft close. They have three adjustments on here so that you can adjust the doors in and out up and down and then your tilt as, as well. Um, so they adjust very, very well. So if you're off a little bit, they work great. Um, I've used these on uh, a number of jobs and I will continue to use them because they are inexpensive, but their quality is great and they work very, very well. Their install is piece of cake. The other thing I bought for this job, and I should have bought a long time ago are the center drill bits. I did not talk at all on how I built these doors. These are shaker style doors. Uh, they will be all uh, routered out and rounded over when I'm done. But if you notice, there are butt joints here on all of them. So my rails, my styles are up, my rails are crossed. I used to use pocket holes for these. And yeah, it's time to move on. It's time to get a little bit different lack of better term. So what I'm using is I had bought a Festool Domino, the 700, a number of years ago for my tables. So I use them to build my doors now. So there are two dominoes on each one, on each end. And with those and the tight bond glue, these doors are solid. They're not going anywhere. So I glue them all together. When I'm done gluing them, I square them up, make sure they're squared up. And then I run them through my sander to clean. I've got a drum sander that I use to clean them up with. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. Um, I am more than happy to take comments. If you have any questions uh, about the tools that I've used, I keep, I've got tools that I've been using all day long. Some of them I've talked about, some of them I have not. Um, by all means, uh, feel free to leave a comment. You can, uh, if you would, I have an Instagram channel. You can subscribe to that, Bain Custom Woodworking. I also have a Facebook channel that my wife uh, maintains for me. Uh, she puts up a lot of pictures that I don't on my Facebook page. So uh, if you can subscribe to that, Bain Custom Woodworking. We also have a Pinterest page that she maintains for me. So again, I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please subscribe. I have a number of other videos out there. I have one video out there that has uh, a lot of viewers uh, where I explain how I make my homemade, handmade, however you want to look at it, uh, wiping polyurethane. Uh, I have used that for years. I was taught that by an old furniture maker. I'll bet you 30 years ago when he saw a table that I built one day and he said, uh, you put this on with a brush, didn't you? I said, yep. He said, let me show you how to do this the right way. And so if you want to go find that video, I have found a lot of people that have found it uh, very, very helpful um, for putting polyurethane on uh, furniture. Um, and it's all uh, oil-based polyurethane, uh, not the water-based. So I appreciate your time. I do hope you're enjoying your time in the shop. And in the meantime, until I put my next video up, please keep making sawdust. Thank you for watching.